Just a quick reminder for you that we've released a really cool game for mobile devices. Our game mirrors the life of our very own Garage 54. Hire a crew, purchase equipment for repairing cars, film videos, and grow your YouTube fan base. Buy yourself cars and modify them in true Garage 54 fashion, and then enter them into a race. Basically, we've made an excellent simulation of our experiences for you to immerse yourself into. Go ahead and hit the link in the description, download our game, and see you on the racetrack. Hey there, fellas! Alright, so today, I'll be experimenting with this here automobile. You certainly remember this funhouse transparent thing. Here we have a battery which is... Let's just say in subpar condition. It doesn't have that much charge. Though our best option would be for it to be completely flat. I think we should try charging it from a... From a 220 volt source without using a specialized charger. And after that, <laughs> then I guess we'll feed the car 220 volts directly and see how it likes that. Alright, let's go ahead and destroy this automobile. Let's get stuck right into it. Feeding 220 volts into a car. Will it start? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Alright, so it didn't take us too long to find that yellow car battery. And here's what we get. The oh-so-familiar sound of a dead battery. We did see a reading of 12 volts, but the slightest bit of load and it plummets. That there is going to be our test subject. We've put together a simple layout. <laughs> to be honest, guys, we didn't cook this up ourselves. This particular scheme we found in an open source on the internet. But there's still the obvious question of whether this will even work properly. Undoubtedly, if we were to switch it on with no load and do a measurement, well, we'll see at least whatever power outlet puts out. Though I might be mistaken. Let's give it a prod and see. We've got 90 volts. Hi, fellas, we seem to have some voltage, which fluctuates between 90 and 100. Can't imagine where that's coming from. Okay, so let's connect this to a battery so that we've got something that draws current. And give this another try. Alright, so we've got negative and positive. Did I get that right? I gather we didn't screw this up. It's basically the same as we saw on that schematic. Something's happening. Let's take a measurement, shall we? It has increased slightly, but it seems to be fluctuating between 13 and 12.5. If it's going up to 13, that tells us that it's receiving some charge. Now we just need to measure the current. Anywhere from 150 to 200 milliamps. That's what's charging the battery. It's going to take us about... a week to charge this 65 amp battery. And that's at the very least. If you take 65 ampere hours and factor in a 200 milliamp current, it's going to take a while to charge it. I suggest we ramp things up a bit. Alright fellas, check out what we've bought. I mean found. 150 watt light bulb, 200 watts. This one is 300 apparently. Let's start with the small one. See how much that affects the current. I reckon we should measure up the voltage just in case, right? We're not the best electricians. We'd best be removed from these power outlets. Let's go. Okay, now we got 300 milliamps. We've increased the current. Now let's try the 200. Go for it. 420 milliamps. Is the voltage also increasing together with the current, or is it not? Hit it. No, it is not. Not even the slightest. It used to be 12. It's actually even lower now. Yep. What sort of light bulb is this? Is it for the high beams? <laughs> or what? 690. 
At least we got it up. 690 milliamps is more than 200. It's almost 700 even. Almost a full amp. Though almost is a bit of a stretch. Okay, so using a bigger light bulb is a way to increase the current. And since we haven't seen a crazy increase yet, see what we've decided to use? An industrial grade heat gun. That 300 watt light bulb is the biggest one we got. We could have tried hooking up a few of them in parallel, but we just don't have enough sockets. Which is why we've whipped out the heat gun. It's got two speed settings. It's rated at 1600 watts. Now we see what happens when you replace the light bulbs in your circuit with a heat gun. 3 amps, holy cow! That's on the lowest setting. Oh, you don't say. Alright, so we're looking at 3 amps. That should be enough to charge a battery. We've got 13 volts. Seems normal. It's jumping between 12.7 and 13. So far there doesn't seem to be any... Excess voltage, so everything's good. Even with that heat gun, we're not seeing any more than 13 volts. In any case, we're gonna have to wait for about an hour, maybe even 90 to 120 minutes. Depending on how fresh the battery is and how well it takes in charge. Though we really need to charge it as quickly as possible. Why don't we just connect it straight to a 220 volt power source? Let's do this. Alright, so here's the situation. If we were to hook up some wires straight to the battery without any loads, demands, or whatever you want to call them. So if you do that, the diode actually lets go. It burns to a crisp. It appears to work as a conductor, but for some reason nothing happens. What have we put together? Looks like it's just hooked straight up. We gonna try this? Let's go flip it on. My guess is that we'll trip the circuit breakers with such load. Let's try anyway. Okay, so we've burned the wires. Not bad. It tripped the breakers too. Or maybe those weren't the wires. No, looks like it was them after all. Yeah. This 220 volt charging thing ain't working. Okay, so we weren't able to charge that battery directly. Instead, we're burning through wires. But no worries. So we've hooked everything straight up to the car. Directly avoiding any short circuits. We're good. So as requested, let's feed it 220 volts and see what happens. Let's do this. Okay, we've connected everything over here. Let's go flip the switch. It blinked. Those circuit breakers. It blinked again, look at that. Holy cow. The circuits break so fast that we don't even cook the filament? I mean inside the light bulbs. What do you know? I think I can hear the starter motor clicking. Ever so slightly. The left one isn't blinking anymore. No, it still is. That's interesting. Then again, not so much. I mean, the relays and everything are short. That's why it keeps overloading. It won't keep doing that forever, am I right? Alright, so we've encountered an interesting situation. Doesn't matter how much you send through those circuit breakers. I think ours are rated at 30 amps or something. Anyway, you saw how they immediately get overloaded. The headlights blink, you can hear a clicking noise coming from somewhere. I gather that's either the starter solenoid or something else. Let's disconnect the wires in the meantime. As we all know, Lottos... They're solid cars. Look here, just try not to laugh. I'll place this battery back in here. 
Can you guess what we have in mind? We'll try starting it. The size? Oh, I see sparks. Let's try this out, Vlad. Oh, the headlights are working. Seriously, though? It's not charging? That's weird. Why would it not charge? Maybe you guys know why it isn't charging. Let us know in the comments. So a thought just occurred to me. I think it's rather curious. So when we remove the voltage regulator from the alternator and use the ladder to power a welder, we saw about 100 volts. Anyway, what if we were to take that alternator which is missing a regulator, connected to this car's electronics, since it does have an output of about 100 volts, and just see what happens. Our circuit breakers won't allow this to work, so I say we throw that alternator in here, the one that puts out 100 volts, and see where that goes. Let's do this. Had we fired up the engine, you can tell that the alternator isn't working. 11 volts is all from the battery. Right here I've got myself a switch to stimulate the alternator to get it to put out maximum voltage. Let's flip it on and see what's up. Oh my, there we go. Look at that. That's quite a load on the engine. How much is the voltage? 19. Oh, so it's the battery taking it in. Holy shit. We're looking at about 20. That's all it's got. Won't go above 20. We've charged the battery. It's at 13 volts. Just a bit. What's the voltage? Flip it on. Nothing is really happening. The car is just running and that's it. It doesn't give a damn. So here's what we're looking at. The car just works. It isn't running any sort of ECU. So there's actually nothing to fry in here. The coil is holding up, so are the capacitors. It's all looking pretty good. But we're not seeing any more than 20 and a bit volts. The battery appears to be gonzo. It just eats everything up. But we've come up with another idea. You know what happens when you shut something off rapidly. That short spike in voltage which lasts for a fraction of a second, it can kill any one of the electrical components. A light bulb, for example, or an ECU, I don't know, a relay, basically any weak point that gets hit. Right, so we fire it up, and once the car is running, we remove the battery, so that it doesn't suck the extra voltage put out by the alternator, which is quite a lot of juice, actually. And then we see what happens. Where do we hook up the AC? 56. Oh, so this is how it's gonna go down. Did you... It was running when I disconnected it. You flipped the switch? Yeah. And suddenly it was over. I saw 56 and that was it. It went up to 56? Far out. Though I'm not buying that 56 volts was enough to kill the car. Really? It can't be. Let me check something. We had a look, and we don't have spark. I'm guessing the switch died, or maybe it was the coil. Yeah, it was probably one of those. And that's as much damage as we were able to inflict. Aside from hooking it straight up to a power outlet. 
And that does it for this one. What a curious experiment we just did. 107% and all that. So 220 we trip the circuit breakers. But nothing inside the car gets fried. That's pretty amazing. Even the switch that was done away with by 56 volts from the alternator. 220 volt spikes did nothing to it. I have no idea why. It has to be some mysterious aspect of our domestic-made automobiles. Right, fellas? This went rather well. I mean, the car is still with us. And that's all I've got for you. You saw us make that charging setup, which seemed to be a ridiculous enough idea. But as a matter of fact, it worked. We don't know what condition the battery will be in after a charge by this method, but I reckon it should survive, since there really doesn't seem to be anything spectacular happening in there. The liquid isn't boiling, it most likely isn't crumbling to bits, so I'm sure it's okay to give it that sort of a charge for a slight boost, since we don't have a proper charger on us. Also, we should note that this engine is lacking any sort of ECU, and we get a serious increase in voltage when the alternator is missing a voltage regulator. At the very least, it endured 56 volts. Yeah, I mean, we no longer had spark after that, due to the switch getting barbecued. But there's really nothing else to burn in here. Go ahead and share some ideas on how to finish the car, for us to ponder together. This thing has lived through so much, man. And mad props to the car for looking so good. And that's all I have for you, fellas. Watch us, subscribe, send in your comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.